To increase the adoption of orchestration within your organization, we first need to look at the way you organize, the way you structure the workflows. Most beginners ask a lot of questions in order to make sure that their workflow are being executed properly, which is very well to start off that way. However, if we want to allow the consumer to easily use these workflows, it's going to be a nightmare. Because who wants to answer question after question? What is your first name? What is your last name? What is the organizational unit that you belong to? What is the IP address of the server? And so forth. And as you can see, the more questions we ask, the less likely consumers will actually execute these workflows. How about making it easier? Having a way where we ask only a few questions, for example, what is your email address and then derive first name, last name and all the organizational information. Or ask only what is the issue that you are um, calling about. What is the host name and leave it like this. Then the adoption of orchestration would be so much easier. As you can see on this intro graphics, we have a context item. This will serve as an input for our workflow. If the consumer did not provide any value, we will use an XSLT uh, expression to detect the content and assign a default value that is either based on a string value or on a module configuration. And then return as an output the same context item. Let's see how this is being put into practice. First we generate a module configuration and assign a default value. In this case we assign the email address of the consumer. create the context item as the input for our module. Important, do not make this as a required field as we want the consumer to allow to leave these values empty. Open up the assign statement and now pull down the module configuration. This is our default email address, the default value that we are going to use later on. We prefix the local variables or context item with an auxiliary term. Next, the email address as an input context item will also be our output context item. It is very important that you keep these the same as we want to assign a default value if this context item is empty. We use the XSLT editor in order to create that evaluation and new content. Move an element over, assign a default label and also load now sample source data. Move over the choose process from the XSLT, select when and choose. And as you can see here, our email address is supposed to be empty and we're using the XPath expression to check if the string length is actually zero or if it has content. If content is actually inside our sample, then we just copy the value of that into our new XML content. And if the values were empty, then we assign a default value. Test in both ways, having data or having no data, and preview the result in the preview window. This function is working properly. Now we take the module configuration that we pulled into a context item into this XSLT using the token feature, assign a default value for testing purposes only, and in the text window in the bottom, as you can see the text item, that contains hello BAO, we are going to override this and assign the token here. This is the default value that will be assigned based on the module configuration. 
save our XSLT. At this point we are generating a sample XML structure as we see the data coming from Remedy personal information. You can adjust this to your needs. Execute the workflow and as you can see if you leave the email address empty the workflow will have a sample response with an email address based on your module configuration. Using this XSLT allows you to assign default value and asking less questions to the workflow consumer.